Dr. Rosa Kwok. Thank you. Raise your hand if you think you might have dyslexia. Perfect. Yes, in the world, uh, about 10% of our population have dyslexia. And today we're going to talk about what's the gift of the dyslexic mind. If you think that, hey, I don't have dyslexia, this is nothing to do with it. No, no, no. I'm going to highlight what's your strength as well. Okay, so this is relevant to all of us. When we talk about dyslexia, the words that we often hear is lazy, thick, stupid, probably a long word for stupidity. And titles like that in the Daily Mail, right, really doesn't help. The fact that we still don't, under, like the general public still don't understand dyslexia really affect how we see dyslexia. 60% of the prison population are dyslexic. If you look at 300 self-made millionaires, 40% of them are dyslexic. When you look at the publication, right, there are lots of books talking about, hey, the gift of dyslexia, the strength of dyslexia. But as an academic, I'm very sorry that I need to point out uh, why it's still quite skeptical in the field, in the science field, whether there is a gift in dyslexia. The way how they do experiments, most of the time, they just do it with a very small sample size, like maybe 10 children with dyslexia versus 10 typical developing. So you would agree with me that this is quite a small sample size. Not only that, but also a lot of the time, what they do is that they do interviews. Say like they see people like Sir Richard Branson, they then talk to them, hey, why do you think you're so successful? And then they give you an answer, well, it's because um, I'm dyslexic, so I need to think out of the box. Well, that's fair enough, that's very good, but in a way, that's all about feelings. It's a lot of talking, right? So it's time that we do real experiments to try to unlock the gift of dyslexia. Lily, she's eight years old, she joined my study, and she showed, again, fascinating drawing in my, in my task. So I asked her, mom, okay, Lily, it's very special. What's, what's the drawing like in, in Lily's typical drawing? And that's her typical drawing. And can I just emphasize she's only eight, okay? And she was using different colors to draw the, the leaves. I have to say, I have skills like that as well, but I only learned that at age 15. And even now, can I just highlight that I'm way beyond eight year olds and, and I can't draw like that, okay? So I really want to encourage our next generation to really nurture their gift and to know that they have a special brain, they, they have a real gift, and to nurture that gift. Lots of people ask me, so who are the famous people with dyslexia? Common ones are Sir Richard Branson, Jamie Oliver, Adele, the singer. However, whenever I bring this picture to see children with dyslexia, what they are going to say to me is, well, well yeah, of course they are going to be successful. Sir Richard Branson, that's Sir Richard Branson, that's not me. Jamie Oliver, of course he can be successful. He has a whole, you know, whole chain of restaurants. Of course he can be successful, right? So they see them very far. They don't think it's relatable to them. So what did I do? I then think about, okay, how can I find real life people to tell children with dyslexia that, look, you can, you can nurture your gift and you can have a good career as well. I partner with British Dyslexia Association I tell them, look, I'm going to give a talk at the Pine of Science. We are going to talk about the gift of the, the dyslexic mind. I know there are lots of parents want to get their children to come here. And even that's why we are recording this talk today. Because lots of parents say to me, look, I can't drive all the way to Co Coventry just to see your talk. But please, can you please record it so that I can encourage my teenager, my children, she needs to watch this talk. So. I talked to British Dyslexia Association, Association sorry, and I told them, we are going to give this talk. How can we encourage the next generation? Within two days, I got 100 replies from adults with dyslexia who are having amazing careers. And I would like to share it with you now. And let's look at how they shine in their career. We have Dr. Richard completed his PhD in chemistry. He has investigated 700 fires, which includes both small domestic fires and huge fires. We have Gemma, who is the president of education, now representing thousands of students at university. We have amazing William, who is a, an engineer, and he got on board of this Queen Elizabeth. Apparently, it's a really prestigious Queen Elizabeth ship, and ordinary people like myself, I won't have access to that. We have amazing Rachel, working in, at the prestigious London School and also working as a senior scientist. 
Amazing Tom. I'm really excited about Tom. Tom's mom is here today. Helen, where are you? Helen. Helen? Yes, exactly. So Tom, amazing. He's a pilot. Got a first class degree in engineering and now doing a third year PhD. Dyslexia did not keep him on the ground. Okay. Michael. Michael did a master's in architect. Okay, teaching undergraduates how to, uh, uh, in the subject of architecture. I didn't even know this job exists before I talked to Kathleen. So Kathleen, she's a countryside ranger and she won national award for her career. How amazing is that? William. William's mother told me that he has always struggled at school, but he was able to handle big machi machinery like that every single day in his farm. With these 100 stories, I categorize each of them into four uh, into four categories of jobs so that it's easier for us to understand and it's clearer for you as well. Number one, the gift that I see is adults with dyslexia, we have a lot of artists, we have a lot of amazing artists. We have really good photographers, we have really good fashion designers. In fact, this lady, she actually worked at uh, Birmingham City University as a fashion designer and as a lecturer as well. Sheila, she owned her, her own pet painting uh, uh, business. Gaze, he, own, he, is re, he is a really good metal work designer and again owning his own business. Joe, again, amazing artist, owning her, his, her own business. I also realized adults with sex, dyslexia have a beautiful heart. And what I mean by that is that when I talked to them, a lot of them told me when they were young, there were not enough good teachers there to support them. That's why now, after all that struggle, they want to be that teacher for the next generation. So we have lots of teachers, really good, receiving thank you notes from their students. We have psychologists as well, because again, lots of adults tell, tell me that when they were growing up, there were not enough people to support them when they were, they were in a difficult times. So that's why now they want to be there for people when they are going through a tough time. And that's why we have lots of social worker and psychologists. Healthcare. Lots of adults with dyslexia work in healthcare. In fact, I need to use three slides in order to squeeze everyone in. We have lots of really good midwives and nurse. James, that one, he is the youngest manager in his hospital. We have lots of really good physiotherapists, Caroline. We have lots of occupational therapists. Um, that too, to talk to our occupational therapists. We have dental nurse, Emily, again, won a company prize because of the amazing jobs that she did in her company, in her, um, uh, in her dental place. We also have um, podiatrists helping people to understand the issues of their feet. Business, I'm sure we are not going to miss this. When you read books, when you hear stories, adults with dyslexia are very good with their business. I love the story by Alicia. What she told me is that, well, Rosa, I did not do a degree in business, but I design baby slings like that and I ship it worldwide because my customers are from everywhere in the world. I love the story by Twangy Chen. She, I'm sure you're aware in Asia, right? Our pressure to succeed is even much more harder compared to Western countries. So if you have dyslexia in China, well, yeah, it's not a good thing. It really is not a good thing. So Twingy really struggled when she was young and now as an entrepreneur, she established a, an education center and she finds evidence-based program to support children who have learning difficulties and she has been helping 800 children. Tom, she, he comes from a really humble beginning. Parents don't have money at all living in the... In fact, I find Tom really amazing because his family live in a really poor area and he Actually, he basically is a self-made multi-millionaire. Zoe, a good uh, yoga instructor and now own her own business. Rona, basically she, she's a manager, but she also wrote a book to encourage the next generation of children who have dyslexia. We also have people who run their own dog training business as well. We know that school can be tough. We really know. And children with dyslexia possibly have been teased or loved at school because of their dyslexia. What I want to do with this talk is to show them that with 100 real life stories, that if this is a career that you want, you can be good at it and you can excel in it. Know that you're amazing, know that you're special, know that you're good, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Thank you.